If history has taught us anything, it's that no matter where you are on the timeline, there are about a million different ways you can meet a sudden, gruesome, and often bizarre end. Today, we're exploring how long would you last living in a different era? Even if you hopped in a time machine with a stash of supplies based on months of meticulous research, there's still a pretty good chance you'd be corpsified within days after arriving at your destination, completely unprepared for that era's death blow of choice. Let's take a trip around the historical block to some of the most prominent places and times in history and see how long you think you'd last against the era's most lethal dangers and see what you could survive. Before we get going, make sure you subscribe to the Weird History Channel. Do it! All right, great. Let's get going. You're in 14th century Florence, Italy, the birthplace of the Renaissance. It's so lovely here. Dante Allegri has already been thrown out of the city and was busy writing his enemies into the Divine Comedy, and the famous dome of the Santa Maria de Flore Cathedral is still a few decades from being built. The famed Medici family are also just beginning to rise to power and will eventually sponsor great minds like Leonardo, Michelangelo, Machiavelli, and even Galileo, even though he wasn't endorsed by Tupac or the Ninja Turtles. But you're also in the birthplace of the Black Death, hot on the heels of the Great Famine, during which roughly a quarter of Europe's population population starved to death, the rat-borne plague rolled through Florence, killing nearly 60% of the great city's population. That means you have worse odds than a coin toss of contracting the Black Death and succumbing to it in three days, then being rolled into a mass grave before being exhumed and eaten by wild dogs. Yes, all of those things actually happened. The time train just let you off in Istanbul. No, it's Constantinople in the 500s, the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire, and was the wealthiest city in the entire world. Emperor Justinian the Great is busy trying to restore the empire to its former greatness, which includes creating civil laws we know it today and launching a building program that will create the famous Hagia Sophia Church. Unfortunately, you're going to have to deal with another thing bearing Justinian's name, the Justinian Plague. One of the worst outbreaks in recorded history, the Justinian Plague wiped out half the population of Constantinople and went on to kill almost 50 million people. Worse yet, the disease kept returning to wreak havoc for the next 250 years. Man, oh man, that is one nasty bug. Not a chance you have any hand sanitizer, do you? London in the 1660s is fresh out of two decades of civil war and is now in the restoration with the monarchy back in charge under Charles II. You're in a time of relative peace, so take in the sights and maybe go visit Isaac Newton at Cambridge while he's working on his undergraduate degree and see if you can get him to quit the books for a few rounds of ale palm. Hmm, this is nice, right? Just make sure you don't share his cup. By now, you should have seen this coming. It's the summer of 1665, and London is about to be absolutely crushed by the Great Plague, losing a staggering 15% of its population over just a few months. If you manage to make it through that somehow, you've got the Great Fire of London to look forward to the very next year, during which 80% of the city will be burned to ashes. Not a great decade to be in foggy London town. Skipping through the time stream to North America in the 1600s will have you rubbing elbows with the Pilgrims and Captain John Smith as they settle in Massachusetts Bay and Jamestown, respectively. Despite what Thanksgiving and Disney's Pocahontas will have you think, you're in store for some particularly brutal winters and the start of a centuries-long bloody conflict between the European settlers and the Native Americans. The settlers didn't only bring guns and buckled hats to the New World, they also brought smallpox, a disease completely unknown to the continent, burning through its victims in as little as 12 days with painful, contagious blisters. Smallpox eradicated as much as 95% of the native population, killing 70% of indigenous people in New England in a single outbreak between 1633 and 1634. Mm, let's get out of here. Ireland in the 1840s has its share of breathtaking views, so be sure to visit the Cliffs of Moher, the newly built Muckness House, while you're here. Just try to ignore the fact that you're under the thumb of Great Britain as a colony of lesser thens, and that there isn't much prosperity to go around, and you might have an okay time. That lack of prosperity is about to get much worse when the Irish potato famine strikes in 1845. Thanks to one of the worst food shortages in history, one million people are going to starve to death or die of typhus over the next few years, and two million more are going to flee Ireland permanently. The famine was so bad, it took Ireland's population until well into the next century to recover. That's not quite the luck of the Irish we were hoping for. 
Rome in the first century BCE is the golden age of the empire, which means it's a pretty good time to be a Roman, as long as you don't miss the Republic too much. Augustus is in charge now, and his reign as Rome's first emperor ushers in the Pax Romana, a period of relative peace in the Roman world that lasts almost 200 years. So kick back and eat some grapes. As long as you're not kicking back during the summer, that is. Summertime in Rome is also called the sickly months, during which outbreaks of malaria, tuberculosis, typhoid fever, and gastroenteritis kill about 30,000 every year. Even if you did remember to bring a bunch of antibiotics with you in the time machine, you might get cracked in the head with a flying chamber pot or mugged by a gang of thugs if you wander the streets at night. The absence of streetlights and abundance of narrow alleyways made Rome citizens less cautious about casually dumping their excrement or assaulting a lone traveler. When in Rome in the first century, get out. China in the 200s BC has just come out of a long period of war between multiple kingdoms, so it's a good thing you stopped at Wendy's before firing up the old time machine. The Qin Dynasty is now in control, and China's first emperor, Qin Shi Huangdi, promises to bring peace and social reforms to the nation. Unfortunately, the emperor's version of social reforms means enslaving approximately one million people to build the Great Wall, a grueling task that killed almost all of its workers. If you manage to avoid Great Wall detail by getting a job as an intellectual, you still might end up as one of the nearly 500 scholars the emperor buried alive to avoid dealing with any criticism of his government. If your flux capacitor happens to run out of plutonium in 1860s Virginia, you'd find yourself in the capital state of the Confederacy right in the middle of the American Civil War. It's a pretty deadly place to stage a historical vacation, but maybe not for the reasons you think. Sure, the fighting killed as many as 850,000 people during its relatively brief span of four years, but the war also spread malaria like endemic jam on toast. The disease is carried by mosquitoes, which enjoy extensive breeding grounds in the swamps and rivers of the South, conveniently where much of the war was fought. Over one million cases of malaria were reported during the Civil War, and the disease has killed an estimated 50 billion people throughout recorded history. Hopefully it brought plenty of off-bug spray and a really big citronella candle. France's Belle Epoque has been going strong for decades by the time 1910 rolls around, and the Industrial Revolution is in full swing. You could take a ride on a streetcar, make a call on a fancy new telephone device, or even go see a movie at the Cinematheque. Just try not to think too hard about what's going to happen to Europe in the next few years. The Great War, or World War I as it would later be renamed, is waiting just around the corner. From 1914 to 1918, France will suffer 1.4 million dead and over 4 million casualties out of 45 million. If you're French and you're going off to fight in the trenches, you have a 75% chance of returning home crippled or never coming home at all. And if you manage to survive the war, you have an outbreak of Spanish influenza to look forward to, which 300,000 people would succumb to in France alone. The 20th century. Hey, TripAdvisor, not a great time for traveling to Europe. Welcome to the capital of the newly liberated United States of America. Philadelphia is serving as the proxy capital city while Washington, D.C. is under construction and is steadily growing into a major city under the leadership of President George Washington. Maybe you can catch a glimpse of him and see if that old wooden teeth thing is real. While you're looking for the present, be careful where you step because you might step on a stack of bodies. Trade with the West Indies has brought mosquitoes laden with yellow fever to Philadelphia, and the tropical disease will leave 5,000 dead from violent hemorrhaging in 1793. Flare-ups are common in the summer months throughout the rest of the 1790s, so it might be best to stay out of Philly until the Eagles are playing. Even then, you might get a beer bottle thrown at you. India in the 1770s is firmly under British rule, more specifically under the rule of the British East India Company, an international trade joint stock company whose shareholders were allowed to vote on public policy over most of the subcontinent. There's no way to sugarcoat it, this is a very bad time to be in India. And if you've been paying attention, you know things are about to get even worse, thanks in part to a massive drought that went ignored by the company. Famine spread throughout the Bengali region, resulting in the deaths of 10 million people, one-third of Bengal's population. The famine gave way to a smallpox epidemic which further devastated the area. The British East India Company promptly responded by raising taxes and doubling their profits over the next decade, because it's a bad idea to let businesses run governments. 
Britain in the 1850s is drunk with wealth, courtesy of the Industrial Revolution, with steam and coal fueling aggressive expansion and dazzling new machinery and factories dotting the landscape that will one day influence J.R.R. Tolkien's vision of Mordor. It's the beginning of the Victorian era, and the Great Exhibition of 1851 showcases all the exciting new products and inventions that rich people will get to enjoy over the next few decades. Aside from the fact that putting children to work in those factories was totally acceptable at this time, gruesome accidents were the incredibly high price of all this amazing new technology. 40% of all accidents recorded at the Manchester Infirmary were factory-related. But the Victorian era brought a much heavier hitter in the form of tuberculosis, a withering disease that could draw its victims suffering out over several months before it would ultimately take their lives. In 1851, the same year as the Great Exhibition, one-fourth of every death in both Europe and America was caused by TB. Progress looks a lot like Doc Holliday in Tombstone. I'm your Huckleberry. No matter where you park your DeLorean, every era of history has a deadly plague, war, fire, or ruler to deal with. Which one do you think you could have beaten, and which do you think would have put you down for the count? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, check out more videos of our weird history.